What I'm going to do now is I'm going to strip the guts out of the sluice so I can mount the leg brackets to it. So I'm going to remove the <coughs> riffle tray. Then I'm going to remove the carpet that has a screen on it on the last portion and has a miner's moss that's underneath the big riffles. And then my little uh, black mat up here kind of spot check for all my gold. So I'm just going to remove all of this where I get to all the holes. There's two sets of holes. I'm also going to need to uh, remove that wing nut and the washer. Make sure I don't lose it, so I'll put that in my pocket. Take the classifier out. And now I've got all my bracket holes all exposed. And now I can start bolting on the two leg brackets. And there's two leg brackets. And uh, one goes on the rear, the one that's kind of tilted, like so underneath. And then this one with the straight legs up in there. So I'm going to flip it around and bolt it all together. It'll take me a couple minutes. Bag of bolts that came with it with all the goodies that we need to put it together. Right now, I need these special little bolts. They come up through the bottom and they got flat heads on it. So when they're tightened up flat and, and securely, um, it, this doesn't inter interfere with the riffles or the carpet or anything. Okay, right now I'm just putting the last of the bolts in that bolt the leg brackets to support the legs to the uh, sluice box. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be tightening everything up. A nut driver does all sizes. Make sure your stuff is real tight and that you use lock washers. Now the reason that we build it this way, uh, with two separate brackets rather than a long huge frame, it makes it a lot lighter, a little easier to carry. And when we bend the edges of the sluice, it keeps the sluice real straight and uh, keeps it level. So when you got water flowing going through it, uh, you've got the proper uh, flat angle going all the way across. People worry about it getting a little scratched up. Hey, when you're a prospector, it really doesn't matter. You gotta do what it takes and your equipment's gonna take a beating too. Extra bolts, extra leg bolt, and an extra through bolt that goes through the uh, leg brackets to support it. So you got some spares in case you ever lose any. We need these to put the legs on. And I think we're ready to drop the uh, sluice and carpets back in the box. We have the expanded metal. Always make sure that the angle of it is going this direction. And be careful with this because it's ex extremely sharp. Set that in there. Then what butts right up to the edge of it is miner's moss. And then from there, a rubber matting. And that first riffle pinches it down right here. It works really well. Try to make sure that the first riffle comes right to the edge of the carpet. If I leave a lot of extra room, if I had the riffle right here, this has a tendency to flip up and get uh, dirt trapped underneath. And I really want all my material to flow on top of the mat so I can spot check for gold and make sure it's right on the top of it. So I'm gonna put my riffle in now. Okay, like so, fits good. And we got some real neat clips on these things. Snap it down, and then that's ready. The classifier drops into here drops in, everything fits together real nice. These are the brackets right here with your adjusters for the height of the box. I'll, forward, I'll set those forward for a moment. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the legs in it so I don't have to bend over and stay down on the ground. I can actually lift it up and make it a little easier to uh, finish the assembly. We can adjust it all perfect later once we get it set up. Just enough to get it snug. It pretty much stays intact. Makes it pretty easy to work with. I'll do the other side. And you'll notice we put all the, uh, the wing nuts on the inside. We put them in right here. So that way um, you don't actually hit the edge of it or when you've got it in the back of your truck or working on it, 
you got nothing to trip on. It just makes it real easy. One leg there and one leg there. Then once we get it set up, we can adjust the angle and so forth. Okay, got that? Now as far as the angle goes, first off you want to make sure you're level going this way and the angle of the box, people talk about one inch per foot but that's too much. If you're running a decent amount of water flow even in a sluice, it's typically only a half inch to three quarters of an inch for any every running foot of sluice. So we got four foot of sluice, so we're going to have it between two and three inches uh, fall. And that gives you the right speed and right velocity for the ripples to work properly and, and let the ripples do their work. Next thing I'm ready for is the hopper. Take the wing bolts out of here. It's all made in the USA, all the Keen products. We know where some of the steel comes from, but we try to uh, keep it at home, keep people working here in the U.S. Well, this is the adjuster bolt for the height of the hopper. So I can increase or decrease the angle so I can get the rocks to run off this right here that's called the grizzly bars down here. Now you notice every other one is not welded. Otherwise you get rocks in, that fit in between it and it starts spreading it out and you know one rock with another rock behind it and another rock. It starts deforming all these bars. We welded every other one. So when they need to move they can move. The key to concentration is classification. And when you have uniform size particles, all the different size, specific gravity is easy to separate gold from all your lighter material. So with this setup, screening all that smaller material, we're only getting a certain size material that the riffles can handle. You can put large material through the box, but typically you got a lot of eddy currents from the water rip, uh, whipping around the rocks, creating currents going the opposite direction, and sometimes cleaning your riffle or creating migration of your gold going down the box. So that's why we try to classify the material um, that's being fed into the hopper that eventually comes out through the sluice. Now I can put my classifier in here. And when I'm using it, most people put the nut back on it. I normally do not, because this normally stays in place. And when I want to spot check and see if I'm finding any gold, I can just lift that up without using a uh, washer and a wing nut to inspect. Then we got this little hose down here, which is an adapter hose. And that gets up to our inch and a half, to our inch and a quarter that feeds it in and run that right up to here. And you notice you put a little piece of tape right here because these washers have a tendency to get lost. They come out pretty easy. That's why you should always get a couple of extras. That's why we try to include some, but you need to make sure that you buy them. And also when anytime you're, when you're using a copper thread to plastic, you have to be careful not to cross thread. So I'm going to take my time, make sure I got that on there straight, pull that out a bit, make sure you compress that rubber gasket. And I think we're good to go. Then we have an adjustable uh, valve right here. Uh, depending on how much water flow we want in the box and how much power we want in the spray bar, we can adjust and regulate the flow by opening or closing the valve. One of the things we don't like to do, we don't like to glue all the fittings together. Because if this, uh, this is say if a rock hit it or anything and you ever broke a fitting, you don't have to replace the entire manifold assembly, you only have to replace the piece. This piece is glued together because that's where most of the pressure is being held off and on so we can regulate the flow of water that's going into the spray bar or the water that we need to make the sluice run properly. This is a great accessory that can be purchased separately. 
It's just a water hose with a nozzle. You can buy these at your normal hardware store. And what it's good for is washing out the bucket or rinsing out your hopper. Or sometimes you need to cool down because it gets pretty hot sometimes. Uh, maybe just to spray yourself and keep you cool. So I'll take that, screw it onto here. The way we supply them is with all uh, half inch fittings. This is the adapter that normally goes to the female end of the hose. It comes with the female, but I'm using a friend's hose. And this is in his extension piece because we're running 100 feet of hose. That's not going to fit onto there. So what we can do is take it off from here and we can screw it on like this. We should also Teflon tape at first. Let's get this apart. Inch and a quarter into there. And we're back together again. Okay, let's get it rolling. Let me get some water flowing through the box now. Pretty well set up. We just try to get a good cross hatch. So we're getting a kind of an area about four or five inches where the spray intersects. Make sure that we wash the entire grizzly. So we'll change the angle of it a touch. There we go. That's just about perfect right there. Put a little bit more angle to the hopper so we can get the rocks to skate off of it. The water's all flowing to one side right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop it down a little bit. Okay, so we get a nice even flow of water coming off of it. We can give it a little bit more water flow now. We got too much angle on the uh, back of it. So now we're gonna drop this down. It doesn't take much to tighten these things. And I think we're ready to go. Let's start moving some material. If you would like more information on the Keen 173H High Banker or other Keen products, visit keeneng.com or give us a call at 1-800-392-GOLD.